Hello YouTube, welcome back to another uh, tech tutorial for uh, this uh, this medium account, Daniel's Tech World. I'm uh, demonstrating, just starting the process of recording a few screencasts to demonstrate some uh, some tech tutorials for uh, various things you know that I've just come across, done, explored, tricks, hacks, whatever you want to call them, uh, over the past uh, number of years. So this is a medium post I put out in uh, Feb, we're now in March, so about two months ago, about saving G Suite and Gmail storage uh, by archiving old emails and files to AWS S3. So presumably those watching this uh, video um, will at least have heard of AWS, which is Amazon Web Services, and S3 is their um, uh, simple storage service, that's three S's, SSS. Um, and it's really a very, very affordable way of, uh, you know, storing stuff you don't need. So um, it, the kind of purpose really here for me um, as a freelance writer was not actually to uh, save on storage space. I'm looking at my Gmail now on the other screen and uh, I have 22% used. So I'm not really in any danger of running out of space. And that really wasn't the whole idea. Uh, it's more that I'm kind of uh, OCD about my inbox in general. I try to keep to zero inbox and clean up my inbox. And if I have an old client or project, I uh, don't like having, seeing that when I'm going into my client list and seeing a bunch of stuff that was finished up two years ago, whatever. So I uh, periodically, but I always want to keep my emails. I don't want to just delete those emails. Uh, so my solution for doing this is to put them into an S3 bucket and just to show you uh the pricing structure for and as i said this is in, in my case at least not about uh I, I i recommend this if you're also trying to clean up your inbox because g suite is relatively cheap and if you need more storage space to go up from 30 gigs to 100 gigs uh you know it's not a big cost it, if that's your problem it's it's easier to do that than to start putting stuff into s3 um but if you want to keep your main cloud storage um, clean and streamlined and just keep it for stuff you're working on day to day, then I think the putting stuff up into S3 uh, as you're finished with it is actually a pretty good strategy. Amazon S3 pricing, this is on the 3rd of April uh, 2020. Uh, you can see the standard S S3 pricing for the first 50 terabytes a month comes out to uh, 2 cents a gigabyte. So really really cheap uh, I get invoices from AWS for about two dollars fifty a month for keeping an awful lot of stuff there including wedding photos and just bulky you know the high-res wedding photos that um, I don't really have an immediate need for or you know they're just good I, I don't want I want to have them somewhere um, so rather than than having them on a local server or you know a backup uh, drive or something like that I just know they're in AWS if I ever need the original high-res images for my wedding that's where they are so that's the way I use S3 and uh, as I said I think for uh, bang for your buck uh, pretty hard to beat okay so basically what I want to show in this vid is how to uh, do that email bundling process so I've just set up for the purpose of this video and a few more tech uh, tutorials this uh, uh, fake Gmail account you could say uh, with a fake name and all that. So basically what I'm going to do is send over to this account a few emails. I'm going to pretend that I'm the client. Um, and I'm just going to say email one. I'm just sending these from my other screen. <clears throat> Let's just do three emails so that uh, email two and email three. Um, so now if I go into my emails, you can see the emails from myself are coming in. So the first thing I, I do in Gmail is um, I'm very pedantic about creating labels and I'll, this this will become clear why because it makes this easier. So I'm going to create a, a label, I'm going to call it emails from Daniel and just make it a top level label. Um, and what, what I'm going to do next is create a filter. So go into the uh, filter tab here. Um, create a new filter and I'm just going to say wildcard from any email address at danielrosel.co.il we are going to tell Gmail to put them into the label called email from Daniel uh, and it didn't actually give me the option there to uh, apply that to current emails although it actually did it automatically so now we have this label called email from Daniel 
and it contains those three emails that I've just sent myself to this account. Now, I'm going to create another label in my Gmail and I'm going to call this, and this is literally the workflow I use exactly. I'm going to say it, uh, sorry, I'm going to call it, God, it's uh, um, archive, uh, sorry, for F3 archive, let's say, okay? And this is my workflow. So I keep, let's say I'm I'm a client of this fictitious person, Shlomo Cohen. Um, when I'm done being a client, like I've closed up the account, I am going to move, just drop this nested under the S3 archive. So now emails from Daniel are under for S3 archive. Now, what I would do is this, uh, to, ar to just archive those emails, you do a Google takeout. And Google takeout is the process you use for um, uh, you know, taking out, cleaning up your, well, it's designed to take a backup actually of your G Suite or of your local Google services. So I'm going to deselect all of these things and I'm only going to go for, uh, I'm only going to do a takeout of email. So I'm just going to deselect all and then click into mail. Now, I do not want to take out all of my email because, um, I'm just trying to get rid of these emails over here, right? So everything in all mail, and this is a really new account. There's a couple of Zoom emails and whatever. Uh, I want to keep those. But let's say I had an, an, I had a bunch of other clients that I wanted to to keep. Um, so I just want to uh, I just want to include the specifically email from Daniel um, label all emails in that label in this archive. So click into all um, mail and firstly deselect all messages. Now it'll automatically, when you do that, it still automatically selects a number of folders. So be very careful here because if you have important stuff in your chat, draft, inbox, sent items, starred particularly, I, starred is my uh, savior for keeping, organi keeping organized. When I have a bunch of emails, I just quickly mark off stuff as starred and get back to them later. So I've only selected for, I've deselected all and just selected for S3 archive email from Daniel. And this is now going to package up just three emails into an um, inbox format archive. And this should be a tiny archive of just, um, you know, a few kilobytes, I guess, right? So depending on how much you're archiving, um, it might take longer than this. And it will, uh, you know, it will actually, um, uh, it'll email you in a few in a few minutes and you'll get quite a heavy thing. Uh, but this is just one, so I'm just going to show you what this has uh, popped out for us. Um, uh, I'm just going to create a folder here called email archive, and I'll just extract that here. Um, and let me just bring this guy over. So this is what we've just taken out. Um, this is the this is my desktop, and I've just unzipped the archive. You cr you have one folder called mail, and you have your inbox. And this is the only file you need uh, for S3 archive email from Daniel. Uh, it's 16.4 kilobytes, and what I would go ahead and do is uh, just upload that to a um, you know an S3 bucket. I keep an S3 bucket saying uh, old accounts, and I just put all that correspondence in there. Now, this is email actually only from, uh, if you remember the filter we created, it was a one-way one -way filter. Um, so if you want to create also your outbound correspondence, so I'm just going to put myself in the to field here uh, and say reply to Daniel1. You want two, two filters. In that case, you want your inbound filter um, and two and that's going to capture emails from you to your account. So before, uh, I kind of skipped a step here actually. It depends if you want just the email from your client or you want the email from you to your client. Um, I create this filter too. Uh, apply filter to one message and apply the label um, email from Daniel. And now that response to Daniel would be if you go into that label email from Daniel. Uh, let me just go back. Yeah, if you go into this email from Daniel, we have the three emails, test emails I sent from myself to this account and the one email I sent back. So this would be a complete archive of 
inbound and outbound correspondence to your client although if it's an email thread probably just the responses from your client would include the would include your email but it's a best practice to include as unique emails everything uh, particularly if you're keeping these for you know legal or compliance purposes uh, keep both um, and that's basically it so as I said I put I put that little inbox 16 kilobytes into my s3 and then all I do is I simply would uh, delete um, the label delete the emails within the label and um, that's it basically and then I've cleaned out those uh, those emails and then you know the process iterates so as I finish with, with an account put them into my s3 archive do a takeout and um, then put those up to s3 so that's my me that's my methodology uh, I hope that's been uh, perhaps of interest to anybody cleaning out their um, their inbox if you do want to get in touch with me questions contact my website is danielrosehill.co.il I have a contact form here um, uh, I have my PGP key uh, so either way is cool and uh, good luck and have a great day